All right, eighth grade, today we're talking about equations in slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is uh, the most common uh, form for linear functions. You're going to see most of your linear functions in slope-intercept form. You're going to love it. You're going to feel comfortable with it. Um, you're going to like using it. It's very useful, so uh, we need to make sure we get it down pat and have a good understanding of how to put equations and graph equations from slope-intercept form. So name, date, title, and let's get some notes. For linear functions, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. You're going to hear it all the time. You're going to answer it all the time. Uh, your teachers are going to say it all the time. So it's y equals mx plus b, y equals mx plus b, y equals mx plus b. What does it mean? Well, m, y, and x we're already familiar with, right? x, the independent variable, that's going to stay as a variable for the most part. y, the dependent variable, that's going to stay as a variable for the most part. We're talking about this form as telling how those two fit together. Why is it useful? Well, m is the value of the slope. So if you ever put an equation in this form, you can immediately see that the coefficient of x, the number before x in this form, tells you exactly what the slope is. So if it's a huge positive number, you know that you have a very sharp slope as you go up to the right. If it's a barely positive number, like a fraction or a value less than 1, it's a sh gentle slope up to the right. If it's a huge negative number, a very negative number, then it goes down sharply as you go to the right. If it's barely negative, a small fraction that's negative, then it's going to barely, I'm trying to figure out what looks, yeah, it's going to barely go down as you go to the right. Um, what is b? b is the value of the y-intercept of the graph. Well, what's that mean? Well, the y-intercept is the value of y when x equals 0. Well, what does that mean? Well, if you think about it, we're used to graphing points. So if x equals 0, then on the coordinate plane, that means we don't move to the right or the left from the origin. It means we're just going to move up or down on this y-intercept or on this y-axis, rather. Uh, so the y-intercept is just where our slope, where our equation, where our line hits that y-axis right in the middle of our coordinate plane. Um, so it's the value of y when x equals 0. It's also just the y-value where the line intersects the y-axis. So you can often see it. If it intersects at a whole number, sometimes you can just look at a graph and you can just see, oh, I see where it hits the y-axis. It's at 0, negative 3, something like that. Um, the last two notes is about how we're going to actually put um, equations into slope-intercept form. The first one says, if we have two points, we can calculate the slope. That just goes back to our last video. We're used to that y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The change in y over the change in x. That's the definition of slope. But the other part is that if you have a slope and a point, you can plug in the point and the slope to this equation up here. So if you've already found the slope by using your two points, you can plug in an m. And then you can plug in an x and a y, and you can solve for this b value, and then you'll have the whole equation of the line. And I kind of want to show you uh, why that works uh, just for a second. So I'm going to pull up something called GeoGebra. It's the best. Um, it helps you to graph and manipulate um, all different types of shapes and uh, equations. So let's just say I just choose two points, and I'm going to say I'll move uh, twice to the right and one down. So that means each time I moved one, once to the right, I only moved down half. So that's a slope of negative one. And now we know that, okay, well, two points determine that slope. So we have um, those two points, and if you use, put them into the slope equation, you would find out that these have a slope of negative one half. Now I can, there are m an infinite number of lines that have a slope of negative one half. It could be anywhere on the graph. But what's important is that if we have a slope of negative one half, if we find the m value, as soon as you name another point, for this example, I'll put b right on 4, 1 right there. So as soon as I lock that slope to another point, this y-intercept is set. It has to cross at positive 3. So this equation would be y equals, what's our slope? What could we fill in for m? Negative one half. y equals negative one half x plus 3. Now we could have y equals negative 1 half x minus 3 if we had two different points. But it's a matter of plugging in that point, that x and the y value that you have, that will lock it in place and allow you to solve that equation to find your y-intercept. So hopefully this is helping us to see what the y-intercept is and the fact that after we have a slope, if we plug in one of these points, it locks us into a specific slope. And we're going to see what that looks like without the graph, just with um, using our algebra knowledge. So I'm not going to save this. Hopefully I, this video goes well and I don't have to recreate it. So we'll see. Wishful thinking, maybe. Okay, number one says find the equation of the following line in slope-intercept form. 
right? We're used to this, but we need to, um, I don't know. So we're used to this. We're used to um, trying to find the points that are already on this line. So let's see what we got here. It looks like this is a point that I can pretty much say is right at an intersection. And that looks like negative 2, because that's our x. We moved 2 to the left, and then 0. We didn't go up or down. So we have negative 2, 0. What else do we have? We have 0. We didn't move to any to the right or the left, but then we went up 3. So that would be 0, positive 3. Now what could I do here? I could plug in to the m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Or I could just try and see what is the change in y over the change in x. Well, y changes, goes up 3 after I moved twice to the right. So I know that this is 3 halves. And I could also, now I could say y equals mx plus b. I could plug in my m, 3 halves, and a y and an x value and solve for b. But it's more useful to know what is b. b is the value of the y-intercept. Well, I can already see the y-intercept. Where does the line cross the y-axis? At positive 3. So I already have this. This is just the equation y equals 3 halves x plus 3. Is the slope 3 halves? Absolutely. Does it cross at positive 3? Is that the y-intercept? Absolutely. So it's not always going to be this easy, but I want you to see that if you're, if you're reliant on the algebra, you're going to waste yourself some time sometimes. Um, so we're going to see some other equations where we need to work it out. But this is one where I just want you to see that uh, slope-intercept form can be really easy to pick out. So you just find the slope like normal by looking at the graph in this case. And we saw what's the change in y over the change in x, up 3 for a positive 2 change, or moving 2 to the right. Um, and then we just saw where is our y, y intercept, and so we got it. Um, but let's see one that uh, is going to demand a little bit more of us. All right, so this one says find the equation in slope intercept form for the line that passes through 16, 3, and negative 8, 51. Well, I don't want to graph this. Instead, I think I'm just going to go straight for it and first say, let's find the slope. y equals change in y over the change in x. That's equal to y2 minus y1 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And I want to plug in whatever I'm going to say is y2 and y1 and x2, x1. So I'll name this one x1, y1. I'll name that point, my first point. And this will be x2, y2 then. And again, I like you to show this works so that you don't make little mistakes, silly mistakes. So y2, what is it? 51. Y1, what is it? Well, it's really easy to pick out right here. 3. X2, what is it? Negative 8. X1, what is it? 16. So what do we got here? 51 minus 3, 48. And negative 8 minus 16, or plus negative 16, that'd be negative 24. Can this simplify? Certainly, this is just a slope of negative 2. So I know that it's a negative 2 slope. So think back to GeoGebra. What do we know what th that this is going to look like? Well, it's going to go down as you go to the right. But it could be anywhere. So what I need to do is I need to lock it into a specific point on the graph and then find what that y-intercept is. So let's do that. Let's say y equals negative 2 is our m, x plus b. But I can plug in a y and an x. I know a point on this line. I know two points. They were given to me in this problem. I know most people like positive numbers, so let's deal with those. Let's say 16 is our x and 3 is our y. If we know that we're going to get 3 for y when we plug in negative, or when we plug in 16 for x, what must b be that makes this true? What's the y-intercept that has to go with this line? Well, we can combine or simplify this a bit and say that's negative 32 plus b, and I can just solve this equation by adding 32 to both sides. That will isolate b. And what do we get? We're going to get 35. 35 is b. So what's the equation of this line? Well, we already got the slope, and we just found the b. It's y equals negative 2x plus 35. So we got the slope and the y-intercept. We know exactly what this looks like. It goes down quite a bit as it moves to the right, and it crosses the y-axis pretty high up at 35. So there we go. Um, we just used two points, and we found the whole equation. We found the entire um, 
all the information we need to know about that line. Let's look at one more. This one says, if you have $200 saved up and you plan on saving $22 a week for the rest of the year, write a linear function for how much money you will have saved after X weeks, then graph it. So in this case, I'm trying to see that we know how to look at a word problem and write a linear equation from it. So we know that we're having a dependent variable. What is the dependent variable in this case? It depends on something else. Write a linear equation for how much money you will have saved after X weeks. So how much money we'll have is based on the number of weeks. It's dependent on the number of weeks. So this is the amount of money. What's the amount of money equal to? Well, it's equal to 22 and 200. But we don't just have, we have one set of 200. That's what we already have. That's not being added repeatedly. But 22 is being repeatedly added or it's being multiplied by the number of weeks. So we have y equals 22x plus 200. Now they want us to graph this. So we talked about graphing linear equations. We could use an xy chart, but again, being familiar with slope intercept form can be super helpful. Um, so let's just, uh, let's just use what we know. So we're gonna make, we know that it's gonna go 22. Y is gonna increase 22 every time we move once to the right because just, that's just what slope means. Every time we move once to the right, we'll increase 22. It's positive 22. And we know our y-intercept is 200. That means we're going to cross this y-axis at 200. So what sort of scale do I want? Well, probably makes sense to make this something like 50. And we can just use a scale of 1. There might be better options, but I think that's going to be the most sensical right now. So we know the y-intercept, that's an easy point to plot. We can just look at this and say, oh, I know it crosses right at 0, 200. So 50, 100, 150, 200. We know that's a point. So this is 0, 200. And what's another point we know? Well, we know that if we increase it by 1, it's going to increase 22. So I know that this would be 250. So we need to go about halfway up, maybe a little less. And we'll say, what's another point? This is an awful line. But as long as you name them, you know? As long as I tell you what they are, you can't blame me for my drawing. So this is 1, and then we had to add 22, so it's 222. Boom. Because I'm familiar with slope-intercept form, I could graph that right away without having to use an xy chart. First, just graph the, or graph the y-intercept, and then use your slope to find the next point. Um, for a challenge question, or just to check your understanding, make sure you know what would negative 1 be. So if you save $22 this past week, or just use the idea of slope. If you go one to the left, what happens with that slope? And so what would your point be? I'm going to leave you with some problems, not just that question, but some problems to do on your own. The first one says, find the equation of the line through negative 4, negative 3, and 1, 7. Number two says, find the slope. Oh, I want you to find the equation. Not just the slope equation. Of oh, the following line. And again, to help you out, if you can't see that too well, I'll point out a couple good points to you. Uh, this is at point negative 3. We'll assume this is a scale of 1 since I didn't say anything. Uh, where else is it cross? It crosses at 4, 3. So if you want to use any of those, those should help you out. Best of luck. I'll see you later.